In my previous video we talked about the appearance of the main cast in The Witcher show, namely Yennefer, Ciri and Geralt, and today it's time to continue with the rest of the characters. We are going to take a look at their depiction by Netflix and compare it to the source material, aka The Witcher books. Also, if available, I'll draw a comparison to their depiction in The Witcher video games. You were eavesdropping? Yes. No. Mostly we'll focus on their physical appearance here and I'll leave the personalities for another video later on once we've had at least one more season of the show. So, let's get going, but before we do, let me say once again that I haven't reread the books before making this video, and so there may be stuff that I'm missing, and if necessary, I'm sure some of you will fill in the gaps down in the comments. Of course, there'll be all kinds of spoilers in this video, so be warned. And speaking of that, let's kick things off with Sabrina Glevesig. Sabrina Glevesig. I must admit, I don't remember her hair and eye colors very well, she did, however, had quite the sizable assets and also dressed and behaved very provocatively. So Netflix did get that right, for sure. As for the games, she's not in the third one, but she is in the second, and her portrayal seems fairly accurate in there as well. Also, by the way, what's going on with her lips? Here are some shots of her before and during the show, and here are some after. Okay, next up we have Fringilla Vigo. Do you know how Nilfgaard took Sintra? The second biggest romantic interest for Geralt. I know people who mostly play the games are very used to Yennefer and Triss, but in the books, Fringilla actually overshadows Triss in that department. By a lot. Quite a lot, actually. Now, in the original, she appears much later in the story than what we see on Netflix. Probably a couple of years, if not more. So first off, she has short black hair in the books. On Netflix, she starts off with long hair and keeps it that way after her enchantment, but then cuts it really short when she joins the Nilfgaardian cult or something. This is our chance to honor the White Flame. Personality-wise, she's not really like that in the books, but overall I'm fine with the length and color of her hair in the show. And of course, The Witcher 3 is no worse in that department. She also has green eyes. I believe I mentioned that in relation to Ciri in the previous video, which is the case in the third game as well, but in the show she has brown eyes. So that's one detail they missed. And of course on Netflix she's also black, which isn't the case in the books. Many people have argued that her skin color is never mentioned, which I suppose in a way is true. However, she's referred to as pale several times, which is the same word that is initially used to describe Yennefer. And speaking of Yennefer, Geralt actually calls her Yen in bed on many occasions, despite not being like her personality-wise at all. Mm -hmm. And what are we up to? Sneaking upstairs to make love. Shall we go? You can rejoin them afterwards, in an hour or two. Yen, don't get mad, but... Stop. Suddenly I have an immense desire to drink. And also, probably more importantly, she has a strong tendency to blush, and it really becomes obvious when she does. Now, I'm not an expert at how people with very dark skin look when they blush. If any black people are watching, feel free to comment about it below, but I'd say it's fairly safe to assume that it has to be far less obvious than people who have extremely white skin. And it's also worth mentioning that she's related to the royal family of Tucson, well, the Duchess at least, and Ciri's father as well, although we don't know how closely related they are. Okay, enough about Fringilla, next up we move on to Calanthe and Pavetta. Both of them aren't in the video games, but do they look right in the show? If memory serves me, they're both supposed to have hair colors similar to that of Ciri's. Again, that may be due to the elven blood, which they share as well, and also simply the fact that they are, after all, mothers and daughters. Now, I must say that I actually liked the actress who played Calanthe. I thought she did a good job playing both her younger and older selves, as well as portraying a range of emotions. But ultimately, Netflix didn't quite get her appearance right. A few upstart townships in the south need reminding who was queen. <laughs> okay, who do we have next? I suppose Borg or Borch, as they call him in the show. I am Borch, three jackdaws. And his Zeracanian companions. 
Once again, these characters do not make an appearance in any of the games, but we do in fact see Borg's daughter, Saskia, in the second game. What is your name? Sen... 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 What do they call you? Saskia. Do you remember what happened? My favorite type of magic. Lesbomancy. Okay, so back to their appearance. First off, he wasn't really an old man in the books, in his human form, and his draconic form was described in a way that made me think he's more majestic, and I didn't really get that from how he looks in the show. And as for his female companions, the only piece of description for their appearance, which I recall, is that they were both blonde, which isn't the case in the show. Another difference is that they can speak the northern language better in the show. Meanwhile, in the books, they could barely string words together. Also, the three of them may or may not have had a bit of a orgy with Geralt. But moving on, uh, and we move on to Eithne, the ruler of Brokilon. She is possibly the most changed character in terms of appearance. I mean, if I were shown this guy and these two women beside him after reading the books, I may have guessed who they are despite the differences, but there is next to nothing that would lead me to believe that this is Eithne. In the books, she had hair and eyes like molten silver, and there was an overall more supernatural feeling to her character. Instead, she and the rest of the dryads here look extremely plain. In the books, they had all kinds of skin tones and hair colors, and um, eye colors too, I think, and even smell, and of course, they also used bows. Other than the changed appearance, Eithne's overall involvement was also less meaningful and less interesting than what we have in the books. This is, of course, mostly due to the removal of the whole part where Geralt meets Ciri in Brokilon, of which I've already spoken in another video of mine, so you can check that out if you haven't seen it. Right, who else? King Foltest, perhaps? He had a nice voice in the show, I like that. She told me, for all it brightens, love casts long shadows. But he did look quite unlike his book description. He was supposed to be a younger and, more importantly, surprisingly good-looking guy. I suppose they got his child version right, though. Meanwhile, I'd say The Witcher 2's portrayal of him was far more accurate to the source material. And the mutations are grandeur. Next up, we have Renfri. I suppose I'm kind of going backwards. So, similar to Calanthe, I liked her performance in the show. In fact, episode 1 may have been my absolute favorite. So, uh, you know, she looked good, but not quite so accurate to the books. Her hair length is correct, but her eyes should be bright, and her hair should be blonde. Now, finally, I wonder if I should talk about Dandelion. Believe it or not, in the books, he is actually blonde. But in both the games and the show, he has brown hair. Now, why is that the case? Well, here's the thing. If I remember correctly, his hair color is only ever mentioned in the Season of Storms book, which, timeline-wise, is closer to the beginning of the story, but actually came out last and a good amount of time later than the rest of the books. Honestly, I'm not sure if I should blame either the games or the show for getting him wrong. I mean, obviously, I cannot blame the games for portraying him with brown hair, because both The Witcher 1 and The Witcher 2 were released before the Season of Storms book. You know, the very one that says he has blonde hair? And both of these games had Dandelion in them, so they literally couldn't have known. And then suddenly changing him for The Witcher 3 would have just been weird. Now, this is of course assuming that I'm right and that his hair color was never mentioned earlier. Correct me if that's not the case. The show, on the other hand, came afterwards, obviously, but Dandelion still has brown hair. Why is that? Well, my theory is that they simply ignored the Season of Storms. This is clearly reflected in the timeline of the show. If you look at the official version of it, you'll see that it directly contradicts the established timeline in the Witcher books, particularly the events in Season of Storms. In that book, it was established uh, again, if I remember correctly, because I'm starting to get confused, that Geralt left out to look for King Foltest's Striga contract after the main events of the book. And in those events, he cheated on Yennefer with Coral, among others, so clearly he had already met Yennefer before he went to King Foltest. 
But in the show, that's the other way around. So, I guess they just ignored the book, right? And with it, Dandelion's hair color. And another thing I would like to add is that, despite the author not mentioning his hair color, I suppose it's not too far-fetched to assume that it should be yellow or blonde, and that's because of the actual name. You know, the dandelion is a yellow wildflower, so perhaps you could draw some comparison between it and a blonde man, in a way. Of course, his name is not dandelion in Polish, it's Jaskier, which translates into a buttercup, and that is also a yellow wildflower. Alright, with that, I believe I'm done. But before I go, I'd like you to tell me what you thought of everything I said in this video, and perhaps to give it a like if you enjoyed it. Finally, I thank you very much for watching, special thanks to my YouTube members and my supporters on Patreon, and until the next video, stay tuned and be good.